guys, no one else joining, so um, let's kick off. Uh, today's mostly a, just a social call, but I've got two bits of tech I was going to throw at you just to experiment because they lead into um, some thoughts that we, Sue and I were having recently about speakers and also an idea that cropped up today um, thanks to a conversation I had with Birgit um, as well. So I thought I would just throw them at you. Uh, the, the, they feed into the idea of now that we've got Zoom going and you know, at least 23 of us are joining in, uh, we could consider having a speaker give a session and we found that as one would expect, a lot of the speakers have lost income in Canberra Club visits, so they're shifting to Zoom. And uh, we found a couple that offer Zoom sessions, and as was said last time, Andrew, I think you mentioned it, that there was a Lightroom session at Newbury Club using Zoom, yeah. and the feedback was that it you know, wasn't half bad. So first things first, I thought tonight I would show you Lightroom by sharing my screen to see what you think. And if you think it's usable, we might be able to get some teaching points out of it, or you might find it useful, then perhaps we could expand on that. Um, and, oh, Alan wants to join. Let's get Alan in. Um, and then on the same uh, theme, uh, I've actually discovered a bit of software that you can download that you can attach your iPhone as a camera to a Zoom session or anything. So I've got my iPhone connected as a camera. You can see my ugly mug again. Uh, with It can either be wireless or cable tethered. But actually, if I start sharing that screen, um, you'll see that it can be used when I find it. There it is. I can actually use it for doing a demo on a bench. So if I wanted to get my camera, um, so if I got my camera off my tripod. Let's go red list. <laughs> I could actually start to show you the controls on my camera that I'm talking about. So if we were doing a teaching aid of how to do something with your camera, you've now got a really uh, cheap, something you've got in your pocket anyway, probably, camera that you can just wire up. And uh, we could attach this to our projector at the club as well. So if once we're back in face-to-face -face meetings, we could actually um, use it to do demos of things on a table or whatever that we haven't been able to do up till now. So just by using a mobile phone attached to the projector. So I thought that was useful. Uh, so I thought I'd share that with you. It's just a seven quid, eight quid bit of software allows you to connect to just about any computer using a USB cable. Um, so I thought that was useful. And then the other thing was to share with you uh, Lightroom. So if I do a screen share on Lightroom, you'll see what kind of quality you're getting. Um, yeah. And if I go into the library view, you'll see, now you might have your um, thumbnails. <laughs> You might have your thumbnails appearing on this side, which is obscuring some of the menus on the mm. right hand side. So you can actually um, minimize all of those. If you hover over them at the top, you'll see um, a little underscore line. If you hit that, it will get rid of all the thumbnails so you can see all of the menu system. Uh, but uh, so I thought, uh, the, I found a new little trick on Lightroom that I thought I'd share with you just for fun um, and to just test the idea that um, we can actually use this, you know, over 
social distancing. So I've gone into the develop. I've got a picture I took at Newbury a couple of years ago. Uh, the, the sun was setting, so we got a bit of a golden hour going on. And if you look at, can you all see where the cursor is at the moment? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So here I've got my white balance. I could adjust that um, or my exposure. But if you look down these controls here, all these controls are all down the middle. They're all zeros. They're all down the middle. If I do auto adjustment, uh, it makes the picture pop a bit better. And you'll see that it's actually made quite a few adjustments over here. And I find as a general rule, I hit the auto button first, see what it's done, and then tweak from there. If I reset that, and just go into exposure, or it's a bit dark, I want to make it brighter, you start to lose de detail around the foliage. So if I go back to auto, you'll see what I mean, the foliage comes back. Um, and over here on this side as well, the, the foliage, if I just crank up, see I'm losing a bit on the edging here. Whereas if I hit auto, it brings mm. that detail back for you. So I always start with auto and uh, tweak from that. The other thing that I also nearly always do is I adjust clarity. So I normally increase clarity a bit and you'll see there that it makes the picture <laughs> pop a little bit more. Yeah, don't go too mad because it gets a bit over the top. Um, mm. And the other thing, sometimes if I scroll down here, I'll do a little bit of noise reduction if I think it needs it. But the new thing I've been playing with lately, uh, and this was something I found on a YouTube video, particularly for landscapes apparently. Now, I'm not sure I like the effect every time, but it might work with some of your pictures. And what the guy was saying was, it's particularly useful for landscape. So this is the closest landscape I could find at short notice. So, and, and what you do is you go to split toning. This is a little drop down area that you can click on the arrow and it expands. And you, you probably never touched it, never used it, didn't know what it was for. And I was the same. And what it does is it takes the highlights of the picture and the shadows. So you're just going to apply stuff to the highlights and the shadows. It's not going to touch the midtones very much. And what you can do in this particular picture, the highlights are largely the sky. And I can apply a bit of a tint to it. So if I click on this area here, I get a pop up and I can move the dropper all the way around or I've got some presets up here. So if I just click on blue, you'll see immediately it's made the blue a bit richer in the sky. Mm -hmm. so if I turn that off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, it's immediately made the sky a bit richer, a bit bluer. But it's also made the foliage just a tad less green. So maybe if I go into the shadows now, click on it again and add I think a little bit of green there. You'll see now, if I turn it off, I've lost a bit of the warm light from the setting sun, but actually I've got a bit more of a pronounced sky and the green pops a little bit more. So these are subtle changes. They don't always work in my opinion to all photos, but it might be something you wanna play with. And what you can do is if you click on this area and go in with the dropper, this is where the preset put it. Uh, you can drag that around and you can move Ray, it. Kathy says she's being she's yeah. waiting to be let in. Oh, right. Thank you. Hang on. Let me... Uh... Thank you. I couldn't see that on my screen when I'm sharing. Uh. Sorry, Kathy and guys, um, I couldn't see that you weren't in. No. I'm in screen sharing at the moment. That's right. no so, Ray, 
Yeah. Well, that that split tone in one of the common things that they they do with it is they add blue mm. to the um, shadows and a, and the opposite a slight orangey colour to the highlights. That's one common thing. Like that. Yeah. Mm. But the, a deeper orange, and then you sort of mix it a little bit more. Yeah. So you, what you can do is you can move this around. <laughs> and make it a bit richer see how rich it's going now the sky is getting a bit sunsetty. yeah yeah it's not normally done on landscapes mm. well this guy was applying it to landscapes and of course yeah. the samples he was using it made the picture look fantastic <laughs> i've yet to get the same effect uh here but you can see by moving around i am able to affect I'm, a, I'm changing the highlights at the moment and you can get some quite surreal effects going on if you really want to. It, it reminds me a little bit of some of the infrared stuff you do, Ange. And another tip, um, Ray, I don't, do, have you ever tried solo mode on your panel? Solo mode? No. What's yeah, that? so if you, if you right click <laughs> on the top of one split toning, right click. Solo sure mode. There. Oh, it went. Yeah, so what it, what it does now is it will close all the other patterns. If you click on lens correction, it closes all the other panels. So you don't oh, have to I scroll see. up so and down. It keeps it tidy. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. I didn't know that one. Yeah, yeah good. So anyway, I, you know, I just thought to, to killing two birds with one stone here, one screen sharing um, and potentially as a, a learning tool. So here we're collaborating. So Andrew is showing me something I didn't know about. Uh, so maybe we could use this to help. Uh, yeah. To help do more of this. Um, maybe we could um, get a speaker in who could uh, take us through certain things. So really, I wanted to just demonstrate that to you all and just throw it out there and say, well, what do you guys think? Um, so you can either, you know, give me an answer now, if you want to answer or an email or whatever, then, or the WhatsApp group, then do so. But, uh, you know, with then nothing else to talk about, I thought I would throw that at you. Thank you. I'm done. What have you got to say? <laughs> Thanks very much for that. I missed most of it. <laughs> I went offline somehow. <laughs> Hi, Jeff. <laughs> I went away and, came, and then came back. You went away and came back. Yeah, the, the downside yeah, of this to go away. thing is that you, you can't get back automatically, but they do recommend that you use the meeting room, uh, the waiting room rather, um, to, just to control who's coming in and out. But to be honest, I think because the invite is only going to us, I, I might actually scrap the waiting room next time so when you join you join you don't have to have me authorize you because like there when i was on screen sharing i couldn't see that there were people waiting to come back in so i'm blithely rabbiting on and there's people mm. waiting so maybe next time i'll i won't do the waiting room and we'll see what happens yeah mm -hmm. pete show us your ears pete let's have a look show us your ears pete you should be able to see him. Get closer. He's close enough. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how close would you like? <laughs> you, you, go right you, <laughs> you go right into shadow when you get near the camera. Two meters. You are. Two meters. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be lucky. <laughs> So has anyone had any uh, interesting photography experiences this week, been experimenting with anything? Um, no. <laughs> I, didn't how much, I didn't realize how much fun it would be taking a picture of my bloody Hoover. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> I'm, I'm struggling, I'm struggling at the moment, guys, to save something from my computer, which I think is on my computer and not in the cloud, over to Lightroom Classic. I just can't get it in there or in there consistently. And I'm about you, to throw you, the computer or something out the window soon. 
What, you think it's in the, uh, the cloud version of Lightroom? Well, it's on my Mac, on my iPad, it's got the little where I put all my photos. They go in there. Right. And I just can't get to grips with transporting them over into Lightroom itself. You've got to export them. Um, yeah, so you have I'm... to, you can't take a picture out of the photo app on the Mac mm -hmm. and put it straight to Lightroom. You have to export the picture from photo uh, mm. as a, an original, un, unadulterated. So just export it to your desktop or something, and then you can import I it do. from there into Lightroom. Okay. So take it from from the the little photo album, whatever I call it, into desktop. Can, can yeah, I export take it? it? Yeah, because I've got it in files like uh, landscape or birds or something. Can I take the complete file over? The folder. You, you can export an iPad. album. <laughs> Sorry, you were, was, I thought was, I thought you said they were on his iPad. They're on my they're on my computer stroke iPad stroke phone, um, right? And they're all in the Photos app, which is all shared uh, between all the devices. But you need yeah. to use your Mac, not the iPad. Export yeah. it to the desktop, and I think you can export an album. So if you've got them all categorised, you should be able to export them as a group, and then import them as a group into Lightroom. Uh, but right. the the Photos app on the Mac doesn't store the photos traditionally. They're not JPEGs as such. All of the photos are all smashed into one mega file hidden on the drive. And to, to do anything else with them with any other app, you've got to export. Better off to get Windows. I see it. <laughs> no, don't go downgrade. You always upgrade, not downgrade. Have you got the Lightroom app on your phone? I've got the, yes, I mean, I went, initially I brought, uh, subscribed to, um, what was it, Lightroom CC. Yeah. But, but then I found that if I went to Lightroom Classic, I also got Photoshop. Yeah. So That's I've, the one I've got. Now, now I've now got all three on my devices. <laughs> And I'm totally confused. And in fact, I was on the point of deleting them all and then reinstating them. One I can't remember, but I, I, think, first. I think if you go on your phone, you can use the Lightroom app. You can give the Lightroom app on your phone access to the photos on your phone. And they will sync across to your computer. Right. Yeah, that, that all works via the, um, the Lightroom cloud. Yeah. So yeah. you need to be aware of your storage capacity and all that. But yes, you're right. Yeah, well, I, that was it worked on the Lightroom cloud. I immediately lost all my storage capacity, the 20, whatever it is. Um, couldn't do anything. So I obviously took them all back off of there. And that's why I went over to the classic. So that I yeah, I, I, my, my view is I, I like to think, keep things simple. I like them on my disk drive, on my device where I know where they are. So that's why I recommend you export. Right. So go into the photos, go into the album that I want, try and export it to desktop. Desktop or any folder you want on your Mac, and then import right. it from that folder into Lightroom. Into Lightroom. Mac. And then, then go to Lightroom and go and get it from desktop. What are you showing us, Birgit? Oh, I was about to say, this is what I use. So I ex just plug this into the side of my Mac and I store all my photos on here. And then I import from here into Lightroom if I want to do anything. That's what I do. External drive. Yeah, an external drive. External yeah. drive. Is, is that where your library is, is stored? Yes. Get a second one and back it up. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I keep all my... Uh, my photos I really like somewhere else as well but yeah yeah because external drives are great but they can fail they will fail eventually so always do backups okay right yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit over the top I've got three or four drive copies and I've got one at work as well <laughs> yeah that's more than me I've got, I've got three copies but yeah the, the problem with like external be, drives, yeah. especially the real tiny, neat ones, is they look a bit like a mouse. 
and mm -hmm. people put them on their desktop and I've seen so many people pick up the drive and start banging it around on the table as if it was a mouse because they they just reached without looking and picked up their drive instead of the mouse and disk drives don't like being banged around on a table uh, and they fail real quick when you do that <laughs> some right <riot. laughs> so like yeah always, always bang bang as well <laughs> Any you other questions? Anyone got anything else yeah. they wanted to share? If not, we'll we'll bring it to a close. Uh, I don't know. I could share Lightroom. I don't have what, Lightroom. What What did you think of the, the shared sharing the, the, the apps and sharing my my screen and all that? What do you think of that? Quite good. Well, 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 did it make sense? Yeah. yeah, and you could see in good enough quality. Yeah, yeah. Because some some of the menu items on Lightroom are real small, and I was wondering whether the quality would be good enough so you could read where I was. No, I couldn't. Yeah. But I was on an iPad. Did you okay. record it, right? That's a good point, Carol. The the bigger the screen, the better with screen sharing. I would imagine. Yeah, I didn't think about right. my laptop. I just right. automatically opened up the iPad. Yeah. Right. Did you, did you record it? I Is have recorded this missed? session, yes. Oh, good. Because that was the bit I missed. So hopefully, I don't know, will I get that if I look at it afterwards, even though I dropped out? Yeah, what I'll do is, I did it with the last one. Oh, I mean, there's no real content in the last one other than us chatting, but um, yeah. I did save the video and posted it on the YouTube channel. Yeah. But, um, well, I'll be able to watch it. I'll be able to watch it on that because I missed all that. So I will do the same with this one. If you give me a, a 24 hours or so, I'll yeah. uh, prepare okay. the video and post it on the YouTube channel for uh, TPC. Okay, good. What I've done, Ray, is I've got you on a 10 inch tablet to listen to and speak, but I've got a 22 inch monitor behind to watch what you're doing. Oh, okay. Flash get. Dual screen <laughs> <job. laughs> Not really. It's, it's because I ain't got a camera on my desktop. <laughs> we should be able to hear him more. Right, doing it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll get smarter as we go. This, I guess. <laughs> uh, someone said they didn't have Lightroom. I, I ain't got Lightroom. No. Yeah. Yeah. So a few of you don't have, have it. it. And, and no, that's mate. fine. I'm not saying you should have Lightroom uh, necessarily. All I'm saying is that a lot of us use Lightroom so we can if you want to learn how to use Lightroom or some of the tips and tricks that we all have developed then we can share those but equally you know, if there are if there's enough demand out there for another program then we can look at that and do that I usually find this uh, something relevant on the system you're using to whatever you show us so if somebody shows me something on Lightroom I can usually find it on on the system that I'm using and uh, and use it, you know, that way. Well, the, the like the these camera programs camera. are all the same. They they all do the similar things. I know uh, some of you were thinking about Affinity as a, an alternate to Photoshop as well. Uh, so yeah, all these things do pretty much the same thing. They all pretty much use very similar terminology. It's just they might hide it in a different menu or in a different place on the screen. But uh, you're right, uh, Jeff, you know, if you see someone do something on their system, chances are it gives you a clue as to where to go find it on yeah. yours. Thanks, Infinity's Ray. That's what I was going to ask you. Go Sorry, ahead, Ray. I, that's exactly what I was going to ask you, was to explain what Lightroom does as opposed to Photoshop, which I would use. Okay, uh, it's a fair question. Um, Photoshop, the primary, the primary purpose of Photoshop is to do editing of the photos. Right. Uh, so that includes the, the basic adjustments like exposure and white balance and all that. But it also is very powerful in that you can then start thinking about layers and compos composite, compositing 
compositing, compositing, <laughs> speak, compositing <laughs> different <laughs> elements of garden, different photos it? into one image or enhancing <laughs> one bit, and chopping it out, and moving it out. It, it's a very powerful tool, uh, whether you're on the full blown version or Photoshop elements, they're both extremely powerful. Lightroom has taken the most common bits of that that you would want to use as a photographer and put it all in a, a one package that's arguably more logical and easier to use in that Photoshop, uh, I'm sure everyone would agree, is a bit of a dark art sometimes, actually using it and finding how to get the best out of it. Yes. But the learning curve for Lightroom is much quicker, much shorter. So you can be much more productive, much more quickly. So Lightroom is is been built by photographers for photographers by Adobe using all the best bits of Photoshop. Uh, the other big thing that Lightroom has, which is in two different places with Photoshop, is that there's a library function. With Photoshop, if you're just using Photoshop, you have to use Bridge if you want to use some kind of library management tool or in Photoshop Elements it's called something else, can't remember what it's called now. There's, there's another part of Photoshop Elements that is uh, the file management side yes. of things. Which called the organizer. Say again? Called the organizer. The, the organizer. organizer, thanks Paul, yeah. that's right, yeah. Mm. The organizer. So you've got an organizer product and you've got the elements product or in photo you've got photoshop and bridge mm -hmm. and, and they're both they're all very good they're all very powerful you can do tagging you can do star ratings you can do uh, lots of different element color coding all sorts of things <coughs> to help you organize your photos lightroom's got it all built into one thing so if I very quickly again, I'll um, let me. Alan keeps dropping out of the meeting. I don't know why. But he, yeah, he's okay. back in. <laughs> he's using next door Wi-Fi. Are you stealing <laughs> someone's Wi-Fi, Alan? You are not got that in mind. So you should now be seeing Lightroom uh, on your yeah. screen, and oh, yeah. Yeah. if I come over here. <laughs> Yes. You're, this is, I'm sorry, I'm going over here now in the, the top right. There's the library function there and the develop function. These are the two bits you use most. The library function is what I was just talking about. And that means over here, I've got all of my library, some 16,000 photos uh, in my library organized in folders how I want. So if I go into any one of those, Donington Castle, for mm. example, I get thumbnails mm. of the pictures that are in that folder. So some folders have uh, subfolders. So if I go into events and expand that, I've got lots of other folders in there. So if I click so on one you can those, use it as a storage system. You're it's saying. a file management system. If mm -hmm. I double click on any picture, you get the full picture. Yeah. That's, but I'm still in library. I'm just managing stuff. So what yeah. I can do is I can apply star ratings. You'll see this one here has got a little flag. I've highlighted it as a good photo. This one's got a flag. It's also got five stars. So you can do all that kind of stuff, but it's all in the same program that if I now want to select that picture and come over to develop, I've now got that picture and now I've got all these things over here that we were looking at. You've got before. your tools. Mm. Yeah. Where do you keep your loyalty, so right? I don't have to load up another program. I don't I have understand. to keep flipping back and forth. I do it all in one place. And as I say, the learning curve is much quicker uh, when it comes to the develop side of things because right. it's all sliders and drop down lists uh, and um, stuff like that. All these sliders here and drop down lists for um, different things. So 
that, that's why a lot of people are referring to Lightroom. But absolutely so, no yeah. obligation on anyone to go. Ray, with can that. you just go back? I, I think one thing you should point out if you go back to your library view on Lightroom. So if you go back to library, so the one thing you should point out is that file system on the left hand side is mirroring how you've got them stored on your hard drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I now share my file system with you, uh, if I can find it, there it is. If I go into personal events, body parts. And Fab One. So now you're, you're absolutely right, Andrew. <laughs> the, I was in the personal uh, library of Lightroom. I was in the events um, folder, and then I went to the Fab One folder. <laughs> And there are all the, the files, the raw files, uh, and PSDs, the Photoshop files that I've uh, created in there. You're, you're absolutely right that that. So, that do you does, use collections at all? I don't use collections personally. Mm, no. Uh, well, I do occasionally, but um, not not a great deal. Um, so. But so yeah, there, there are many features, and, and you know, if, if there's interest, we can certainly take you on a tour of that. Maybe Andrew, we could do a double act or something on that um, via yeah. Zoom. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I personally I use it for a good ninety percent or more of my post production uh, work and my workflow on uh, my photography. Um, yeah, so I mean, what you'll find with a lot of other packages now is when when Lightroom, when Adobe decided to get rid of the standalone programs you could buy, went over to the cloud, all the all their rivals started bringing out better programs that have got all the same sliders and all the same functionality as Lightroom to try and pinch all the people that didn't want to do the cloud. So if you buy most other packages and you open up the develop module, it almost looks exactly like that panel in Lightroom. Uh, but most of them don't have the, the sort of asset management that Lightroom does. That's what most people use it for. Mm. Cool. All right, well, does that answer your question, Rosemary? Yes, thank you, because I didn't quite understand what the benefits were of you know, comparing the two programs. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Uh, by the way, guys, do you like my suntan? It's really coming on nicely. <laughs> I've been doing lots of digging in the garden. We're preparing a lawn area, so I've been doing lots of double digging, raking, and all sorts of heavy labour. And I've uh, caught a lovely tan. <laughs> it was great. So in the fence. <laughs> 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 okay guys well uh i guess you know it's been what uh half an hour or so so shall we call it quits and uh, we'll get yeah. together we, next week same time same channel okay. yeah? can we just okay. get a bit of bit, can we get a bit of feedback about the zoom event at newbury um yeah they had um brian woosley or what i can never remember. so he's the canon guy i think you've had him and yeah, he, he, he just went through sort of some basic tips in Lightroom. Um, it was sort of a trial event to see if it would work or not. And it went very well, actually. So Newbury are planning on running some of their competitions through Zoom. Oh. We're, yeah, they're gonna... What I don't see is the difference between having a speaker on Zoom and watching yeah. a YouTube video. Yes, it's very, I mean, it's it's one of these things because at Newbury, their mixed level of Lightroom, all the things that he showed us in that sort of trial, I already knew, but there were a lot of people that didn't. So it's always the same case whether you get any speaker. It's how he balances the what he teaches you. Yeah, the other yes, thing I noticed quite, Paul, was... Paul's quite right. 
you can, you know, most of the time if I'm stuck on anything, I'll just Google, I'll just Google it on YouTube. Yeah, I, I was also came across a speaker who was offering a two hour Zoom session for 49 quid. So on the basis that 49 quid was not a bad rate, but then I thought, hang on, two hours on Zoom? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think that's a bit too long, personally. You know, hour max, maybe, on Zoom. But you're right, Paul, that there's not a lot of difference. It's good. But what I like about today, with Andrew also knowing Lightroom very well, is we've been bouncing off each other. So it's been interactive with Ray asking his question and his struggles with Lightroom. That, I think, there's value, especially when we're socially distancing. If we, if we are struggling in any of these areas, then okay, stick your hand up, say I'm struggling here, and we'll set up something. And if it's me or Andrew or anyone else, let's use the technology in that way maybe. Yeah, I was just thinking whether people could send you any things they'd like to learn in Lightroom, and then we could see what's possible via Zoom. Yep. And that might be better than you know, hiring a speaker who we don't actually know what they're going to cover. Yeah, and if it's going to go over the 40 minutes, obviously we've got to pay for Zoom. It's not expensive. But you've been it? upgraded, um, Ray, today. I, Ray. I did get upgraded today because uh, after last meeting, when I got upgraded, when I closed the meeting, I got a message to say, if you schedule the next meeting now, we'll upgrade you again. Oh, so, no. I did. Um, <laughs> so we've had two freebies, um, but next time I doubt that we'll get upgraded. So if we are going to use it for more interactive stuff like we did today, then maybe we want to prepare for that and pay. It's 12 quid a month or something. It's not a fortune. So we can afford it. And it's on a monthly contract. So you pay for a month. If we don't use it the following month, we don't pay. Um, yeah. So we can turn it on and off as we need it. So um, you know, we just need I, to bear that. I personally think it's a great idea. It's keeping us all together. We're seeing yeah, each other. Yeah. I, I look forward to Wednesday evening now for half an hour. It's good. Yeah, I think it's, it's great. How long do we have the now? Right. I didn't quite hear that. How long do we have the now on the how long? Half an hour. Half an hour free. Well, normally it's 14 minutes free. Right. Um, up to 100 people for 40 minutes free. Right. If you pay the 12 quid or whatever it is a month, you it's unlimited time up to 100 people. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. So it's, okay. it's not a lot of money at all. <clears throat> And my understanding is if you do a one-to-one, -one, it's unlimited. It's only when you go to three people or above yeah. that you have a time limit. And there are a couple of extra little things you get when you pay. Like on when I was doing the YouTube, the holding page I had with the music and everything uh, was a nice way to tell you you're connected, even though the meeting hasn't started. <coughs> I put that up a little bit early just so that you knew you were in the right place and everything was working before the meeting started. That was a nice thing to do. Can't do that on the free version of Zoom, but if you're on the subscription version, there are a couple of extra twiddles that you can add like that. So that, you know, that'd be nice. Would Ray. you have the same password then, Ray? I, I managed to figure out when, when I told, told you that after the last meeting, it said, if you schedule it now, you get another freebie. When I went to schedule it, he said, you can schedule this as a recurring meeting if you want to. Uh, and if you schedule it as a recurring meeting, the meeting link that I gave you all for this one is persistent. So the link you've now got should work every time. And even when I upgrade, the same thing should happen. So it should be this link and password and everything from now on. Um, so that, you yeah, know, that's good too. Okay. All right, guys. Well, it was lovely to speak to you and hear you and interact and um, <coughs> you go off for a pee and have a cup of coffee. 
And thank you, uh, thank you, Thanks, for, Katrina, for getting a camera. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. <laughs> All right, bye now. Bye. Stay safe. Bye. 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 Bye.